and welcome back to The Shit They Don't Tell You. Hello, welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. But also it's a feeling. With two people. It's a vibe. And today, indeed, we are talking about maybe one of the wildest things I have ever read in my entire life. Steve didn't tell me what the topic was about before we started, FYI. So my wife, when we got, well, before we got married. Mm Mm-hmm. And this is genuinely probably the wildest thing that I have ever encountered in my entire time on this earth for 37 years. What? She promised me when we got together that we would do anal, but then she says, once we get married, she of course conveniently says we can't do anal. It was a bait and switch. So I think that's messed up. But that's not what today's topic about. Okay, okay. Indeed, today's topic is actually somehow even more mind-blowing than that topic. How? So I'm going to read you a post. Okay. From Reddit Aliens. Oh, shit. From, And and this is the the topic. Ready? From the late 2000s to the mid-2010s, I worked as a molecular biologist for a national security contractor in a program to study exo- biospheric organisms or EBOs. I will share with you a lot of information on the subject. Feel free to ask questions or ask for clarification. This blew up. By the way, this is one of the biggest posts they've ever posted Mm -hmm. on this particular place. It like went to Rogan. It went to like everywhere. Okay. And um, everyone is talking about how this guy claims from the late 2000s to the mid 2010s, I worked as a molecular biologist for a national security contractor in a program to study exobiospheric organisms. The aim of the program was to elucidate the genome and proteome basis of these organisms. Although the study of these um, creatures Uh has been ongoing um, through decades in other programs, the new high-throughput DNA sequencing techniques of the late 90s if you remember, they mapped the entire human genome in the 90s. Yeah, that's how we have DNA like evidence now. Exactly. Because we didn't have that before. So he's like, yeah, a lot of the um, the technologies of the late 90s unlocked stagnant research in this particular area. And since then, several breakthroughs have led to significant advances in our understanding of the genome and proteum of these particular beings. What we've learned so far has enabled us to outline some concerning perspectives about our place in the universe. Briefly, we've discovered that the EBO genome is a chimera or like a human animal hybrid, right? Okay. Um, But these are of genomes from our biosphere and also an unknown biosphere. Oh shit. So alien hybrids? They are indeed they are, but, but most fascinatingly, right? They are artificial ephemeral and disposable organisms created for a purpose that still partially eludes us. I'll be substantiating my statements after a brief introduction. The reason for disclosing these secrets is quite simple. I believe that every human being has the right to know the truth and that to progress, humanity needs to divest itself from certain institutions and organizations that will probably not survive these revelations in the long term. I'm aware that I'll have very little impact in this regard, but I still believe that small leaks are necessary to break the dam of misinformation on this subject. When the governments will eventually reveal these secrets, there will undoubtedly be a societal upheaval, but in my opinion, the longer we wait, the worse it will be. I choose to divulge what I know anonymously out of selfishness for the well-being of myself and my family. I am aware that this diminishes the research and credibility, or I'm sorry, the reach and credibility of my message but it's the furthest I'm willing to go personally. I choose this form because it offers a good compromise between anonymity and popularity. And it went popular. This thing blew up, right? Um, Okay, so I think you get that, right? Right. So now he says, look, please excuse me if you find it difficult to understand what I'm explaining. Some parts of my text are very technical. It's difficult to find the right balance between vulgarization and scientific explanation, which I understand vulgarization because I use a lot of vulgar words. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, that's why I, I think Bob Lazar did a good job of of explaining it both in scientific terms and layman's terms. But it's Me too. not a not an easy task. And such a perfect segue, by the way. So, like Bob Lazar, he's like, "Hey, look, I want you to know I have a PhD in molecular biology. 
I didn't actively seek to be part of this program. Rather, it was a stroke of luck that introduced me to one of the senior scientists. I met this person at a conference where I was presenting a poster on my PhD research. When I think back, I don't believe he was impressed by what I was presenting because it was quite frankly a project that wasn't going anywhere. I think it was rather the most important aspect of a professional life, the attitude and the ease in which you make connections. Shortly afterwards, I graduated. I received a call from this person offering me a position. And at the time, everything was pointing to me working at a regular lab laboratory. I did a series of three increasingly suspicious interviews. Does this sound familiar already? Mm -hmm. This is exactly how Bob Lazar describes right. what he went through, right? Um, he says that Edward Teller approaches him. He's one of the fucking fathers of the atom bomb. And Bob Lazar was a hobbyist. And all of a sudden, they just went, they took a shine to him. And they said, maybe you can help us with this stuff. So somewhere, somewhere uh, there, right? Yeah. Um, he says that he does these interviews where his scientific, his scientific background and knowledge became less and less relevant. And the first interview that he had was um, with two senior scientists, the second and third with people he's never seen again who were obviously not interested in science whatsoever. Sometime after the interview, I was asked to go to a fourth location where it seemed like a corporate lawyer presented me with a non-disclosure agreement. Yeah, this is Bob Lazar too. Indeed. I was going to say, he, Bob Lazar had to sign all these like documents. So he made sure to not only explain every detail, but also that I understood the consequences of not respecting it. Mm -hmm. Which he's doing right now. <laughs> and then he says, so the first employment weeks were by far the most memorable, although I spent most of the time in a depressing archive room. Mm -hmm. It consists almost exclusively of reading about the subject of study and to get us up to speed. He's like, there's no secret web Wikipedia or even a reference book to guide us. There's only dry reports, memos, presentations, procedures, and SOPs are standard operating procedures. These documents are almost exclusively about the biology of these creatures, but there are, almost, uh, there are also a few that deal with other subjects such as their food, their religion, their culture. And you're gonna love this stuff. <clears throat> there were no documents on their technology. So he says, as as mentioned above, the aim of the project is to gain a better understanding of the EBO genome and proteome. Do you know what a proteome is? No, me either. I think it's just like how their body works. But I don't. Some maybe a cell. I have no clue. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. To achieve this, a team around twenty scientists, four senior t scientists, and a director was involved. The scientists, like myself, had as their main responsibility to carry out the technical work. As each scientist had, to my knowledge, a PhD, we were all somewhat overqualified for what is ultimately a technician's job. The senior scientists, who make full use of their diplomas, had the task of designing the assays and had a super... I don't know what that means either. Spell it? A-S-S-A-Y-S. -S -S. Oh. I don't, I don't know what that... I don't know. Maybe you meant essays? I hope. I don't know. They say he had, they had a supervisory responsibility. They're also in charge of training new employees and sometimes even came in to do technical work. The director, of course, was the person in charge who dictated priorities to the senior scientists. He was rarely on site, and the few times he was, it was to attend meetings. Other than the scientific staff, there were security guards working for one subcontractor or another. There were no support staff such as janitors or maintenance workers. Scientists were responsible for this kind of work. That's kind of crazy. Well, I guess if you want to keep things secret, it makes yeah, sense. makes sense. Yeah. In addition, logistical constraints ensure that every scientist is capable of carrying out any technical activity. Which, again, measures up with what Bob Lazar was saying, yeah. right? It's yeah, like, definitely. hey, look, it all had to be segmented. Yeah, very Nobody knew what everyone else was doing. Compartmentalized, exactly. yeah. The laboratory itself, let's talk about where, where the lab is, right? Located in Fort Detrick, Maryland. Okay. In a building used for legitimate biomedical research. The clandestine operations are carried out in a restricted part of the basement out of sight from regular workers. Okay, so since this has been posted, this particular... People have gone over there? It's been wild. Fort Detrick, Maryland, in this particular site has been observed, and people are checking it out. People are Googling it and everything. Hmm. Of course. Yeah. Um, he says, contra contrary to what might uh, what one might imagine, the biosafety level is not maximal for this type of research. 
Indeed, the lab containing EBO samples, like extraterrestrial biological organism samples, Mm -hmm. or derived cell cultures, is BSL-3, while the lab where assays are conducted are BSL-2. So I assume it's something like not as high level. Mm, Okay. (laughs) Right? (laughs) I don't know. Um, The BSL-3 area of the facility includes a freezer room and a cell culture lab and is only accessible through an antechamber from the BSL-2 section. So basically... It's a cover job. They're like, we use the lab. It doesn't look as secure, Mm -hmm. but that's where we have the most secure shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, He says EBO carcasses, right? Okay. Are preserved in horizontal freezers at at a temperature of negative 80 degrees Celsius. Um, To maximize the preservation of these carcasses, they are preserved in vacuum bags and the air in the room is controlled to minimize humidity. If you remember, Bob Lazar talked about how they had to go into like rooms that were cold and, sh- and all kinds of shit. Or no, it wasn't Bob Lazar. I was going to say, I don't remember that. It was Yuri Geller. Mm. So Yuri Geller, remember he was a mentalist, quote unquote, a bullshitter from the 80s. He used to do Ben Spoons. Okay. He says that the Govies, and he there's actually a picture of him with um, um, Werner Von Braun. Uh-huh. And he says that the government... Had him check out, check out some the of these, no, some of these EBOs oh. Oh. and a spacecraft in a refrigerated facility in the 80s. Oh, okay. So this is kind of like meshing with what Uri, Uri Geller has said okay. for a long time. And Uri Geller, you know, is almost a carnival barker, right? Like he's kind of a silly um, person in general because he's sort of thoroughly debunked throughout the 80s I see. and 90s. But he claims that the government trusted him enough to like show him some shit. Okay. And that somehow lines up with this story. And I don't know. Maybe the story's just using that, right? We don't know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're, we'll keep all skeptic options open yeah. and all open-minded. Keep all the radars on, friends. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, he says there's only four bodies at this site. None of them are complete. It's obvious these creatures died of, as a result of major trauma. I've never witnessed a motorcycle accident fatality, he says, but it probably looks similar to this. It is acknowledged that there are more EBO carcasses at other locations. The cell culture laboratory, as the name suggests, is where the cell lines derived from EBOs are grown and related activities are performed. He says, I'll talk more in detail about these specific cell lines later on. Um, The area where they're at is mainly used for, he says, assays again, immuno chemistry, genetic engineering, immunocytochemistry, storage, etc. I would assume that means something about like, can we derive medicine from it? Can we derive it's vaccines? so important. Yeah, okay, that's, sure. Yeah, that's what I derive from it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's so very, important. very important. <laughs> I'm going to Google assays. Okay, please do. A-S-S-A-Y-S. Yeah. Okay. There's also a cell culture lab, but this is used for more traditional cell lines. Other than the labs, there are all the amenities you could find in an office. Note that the internet access is limited to senior staff and up. There is, however, an intranet for bioinformex needs. There's a lot of words. Okay, so biological assays are experimental methods for assessing the presence, localization, or biological activity of a substance in living cells and biological matrices. Say that one more time. They are, so their assays are just like a way of experimenting so people can do it on metal or whatever, but biological assays are experimental methods for assessing the presence, localization, or biological activity of a substance in living cells and biological matrices. Okay. That's what I was saying. Yeah, definitely you said that. So this guy says, um, you know, first of all, let's talk about their genetics. Okay, let's get let's finally get into it. Okay, so this is from his research. From that his research, okay. right? From working at this, this place. The genetics are like ours based on DNA. This fact was very puzzling for me when I first learned about it. We imagine that beings from an alternate biosphere would have genetics based on a completely foreign biochemical system. And surprisingly, this is not the case. Several conclusions can be drawn from this surprising revelation. The one that immediately comes to mind is is that our biosphere and their share a common ancestry. Their eukaryotes, which means their cells have nuclei containing genetic material, which suggests that their biosphere would have been separated from ours sometime after 
the appearance of this type of organism. The term exobiospheric organism is actually a misnomer, but, but as it's a historical term, it's still used. Their genetics are not only based in the same genetic system, but they're also, a, they're also compatible with our own cellular um, machinery. This means you can take a human gene, insert it into an EBO cell, and the gene will be translated into protein, and this, of course, works in reverse with a human gene inserted into an EBO cell. Of course. Wow. There are important differences in post-translational modifications that will make the final protein non-functional. I don't know what any of this means, but he says he'll discuss it later, so I hope it's way later. Okay. <laughs> Their genome consists of 16 circular chromosomes. He says, you're probably familiar with the concept of intergenic region or junk DNA, which is actually, I am familiar with this. Okay. These are basically DNA sequences that don't code for proteins. There are evolutionary residues, transponsoons, inactivated genes, and so on. To give you an idea, in humans, intergenic regions represent approximately 99% of our genome. It's a huge amount of junk DNA. Uh -huh. He says, I'm aware that these sequences aren't completely useless. It can be used as histone anchors, whatever that means, as buffers to protect coding from D coding DNA from radiation, or even as alternative open reading frames. But that's rather peripheral. I think okay. we all know what that means. For sure. You know I mean? Moving on. Couldn't have moved on faster. Just move on. So what's particularly striking about the EBO genome? is the uniformity of these regions. We see the same sequences repeated everywhere. And the distance in BP between the genes is virtually the same throughout their genome. The result is a minimalist, highly condensed genome. In fact, it's much smaller than ours. But moreover, the quality, I'm sorry, the quantity of protein coding genes is even significantly lower than ours. Probably due to the genetic refinement, but also the biological processes that are absent in EBO. The uniformity of these sequences, this is the most important part, okay. is a major indication of the artificiality of these beings. Why is it so perfect? Hmm. Right? The sequencing is so perfect hmm. that they believe that they're artificial, almost like spacesuits, almost like they're grown to be, or built like they're farmed to farmed to be sent to other places. Yeah. And if they die, who cares? They're not killing beings. It's wild because it feels like something that we would advance to like where, of course. you know, we're doing, we're doing stem cell, we're doing some stem cell research, Indeed. you know? And so is it morally, is it ethical to grow, uh, like a, not a real human, um, but like a fake human and then use them for, parts and like you know to save other people's lives like harvest their organs or exactly. something you know there's like a lot of things that i could see in a maybe a different planet that they're like yeah we should just farm fake beings and like use them for things yep and that's what's so crazy about it is that you know like yeah we're using drones in warfare it's the same idea like you you build a machine and you send it to where you don't want to go yourself well, this seems like more of a medical sense, or like a more well, it's 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 definitely you know bio, more biologically. You're growing something. Uh -huh. It's the same idea. You're not. You think they're growing armies? Yeah, I do. I, I see. I think they're growing like beings, mm -hmm. but they're they're not. There's nobody inside of it. It's like it's like when Nate was doing the drone program. Uh -huh. Like Nate's sitting in Florida. So it's just the vessel. Exactly. Not this. There's no soul inside. Exactly right. I see. It's a controller. Yeah. Right. Or he was in Germany. He was in Florida. Wherever he is. He doesn't have to be in the I suit see. itself. The suit does the job. But, uh -huh. Yeah, like the but movie. It's bio, but it's bioengineered. Like Avatar. Indeed. Yes. Um, and so that's what you know. He's saying, like, hey, dude, when we were in this program, we concluded that this is artificial. Like these beings that we recovered, right? The eight beings that we have on site, the um, partially, you know, um, you know, we they're don't. Have, they're not. All, they're mangled. Mangled. Yeah. But they're suits. Oh. essentially, mm -hmm. which is kind of wild. It's pretty wild, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Um, so moving moving on to um, their so anatomy. You mean right? like at first they thought we had a common ancestor and now they're like, nah, these are just manufactured. Well, no, no, no. It's the same way. It's okay. like you build it out of us mm -hmm. and like from wherever they're from. Okay. But it's the same thing. You're just building it. It's like no different than like, you know, if we made a person that's not yeah, a person. we made a person that's not a person, and okay. they're doing it right now. 
they actually have human animal human animal um, chimeras in certain countries where they're not supposed to be able to do that. What? They're they're working on no stuff way. like that. Absolutely, they're That's doing crazy. that. Absolutely. Um, okay, so let's talk about their anatomy. Okay. So he says they're morphologically very similar to the gray aliens that are part of modern folk folklore. Their height is about 150 centimeters. They have two arms, two legs, and a head. But still, there are some notable differences. I thought differences. this guy was from Maryland. Yeah. Why is he talking in centimeters? Dude, scientists are <laughs> whack. They're so weird. They're whack. What the fuck is 150 centimeters? Tell me about it. I don't know. Three feet? Just tell me how many dicks length. Yeah. How many, how many dicks? Well, just how many feet? It's like, hey, dude, it's four be, and a half Can you be from Maryland at least? <laughs> exactly. Um... I, I, you know, when I read 150 centimeters, I, I think they're taller than a building. Okay, yeah. That's a lot of, that's 150. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, the gray skin, he says, that is often described in folklore, is in fact a biosynthetic film, which likely serves to protect the EBO from a hostile environment. It doesn't provide effective protection against temperature changes, but it does offer adequate protection against the passage of liquids. It is possible that this film confers other advantages but my knowledge on the subject is limited under the gray film so like when you pull back that skin the epidermis is actually rather white and the texture is very regular and without any hair we do not see any defect other than the folds near the joints it is described as as greasy in one report but that's not something i've observed the same report states that a strong, lingering smell of burnt hair and ammonia is present when the film is removed. Mm. There are a lot of pores on the skin crossing from the epidermis, um, the skin, right, to a gland in the hypodermis. The glands and pores are the terminal part of the excretory sudiferous system, which could explain the previously mentioned smell. So imagine, there's, there's almost no waste they just sweat out you know whatever they ingest they sweat it out hmm. so they don't have to deal with like pooping yeah going to the john <laughs> you know spending 30 on the fucking toilet hmm. they don't have to deal with it okay they don't have to put you know some people attach you know chains with rings above what do their they toilet eat? so what they do can they grab, eat then? grab onto something so they can shit it out no they don't they do what Olympians. They, but what do they eat? Does he going to get there? Um, <laughs> yes, okay. he does get there. Okay. He does get there. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the head. The head. The head. Okay. The head contains two large oversized eyes. Sound familiar? Yeah. Two nostrils without protuberance, which I think we all know what it is. So yeah. I'm going to move on. So they don't have like an extending nose. It's yeah, there's just, no protuberance. It's just, it's just two nostrils. Okay, go. I said, all right. The, okay, say third Go. Time. A narrow mouth without lips, two ear canals without like, auricles, so there's no hearing mechanism for them. No, they have ear canals. It's just ear like canals. it's like nose without nostrils. So they don't they don't have cartilage. They just have like the holes. Correct. They have the orifices. Exactly. But with no tutelage. They have dicks without boners. Yeah. I think that puts it together pretty well. Yeah, pretty pretty accurately. Okay, thank you. Um, he says there is a mandible. But the musculature is vestigial. I don't know what the fuck does that mean? Mandible. The jaw. Oh, the jaw. You never studied a skeleton. Um, I was sick that day. Okay, there are no <laughs> teeth <laughs> or tongue in the oral cavity. The nasal cavity, where the nostrils meet, is compact. It does not not rise cranially, but extends axially, which I think we got through with protuberance. But okay, dude, way to repeat yourself. Um, there appears to be no equivalent to the olfactory bulb in the nasal cavity. I don't know what that is. Um, the mouth leads directly to the esophagus and the nasal cavity to the trachea. The trachea and the esophagus do not communicate. Oh. He says they're eyes, right? Mm -hmm. So like the skin, the eyes are covered with a semi-transparent biosynthetic film that offers the same environmental protection while providing protection against certain wavelengths and light intensity. When the film is removed, a more traditional eye is revealed. It's about three times larger than a human eye, and there are no eyelids. The size of their eyes suggests they have excellent night vision. It seems paradoxical, paradoxical to cover them with a semi-opaque film. Perhaps they only need to wear it in a bright environment. Their sclera is the same color as their skin. The iris is pale gray. The pupil is black, 
and oversized. The lens is rounder than a human and the musculature used to adjust focus is more developed. So when we see like the cartoony, like black, all black, big eyes, it's just the film. Film. And then you take it off and it looks like a big old human eye. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and it's really night, like very, for night vision potentially, like they hmm. only use it like when we see the big fucking eyes. Yeah. It's not like I got to say a day. lot of this lines up with K-Pax. Hey. The movie K-Pax. Well, we're going to go to break, mm -hmm. but when we come back, we're going to talk a little about that. We're going to talk about their religion. We're okay. going to talk about what they are here for, what they believe potentially. Okay. All from wow. this fucking Reddit post that blew the internet up. Well, yeah, it's so detailed. I know. It's interesting. He hell. uses a lot of complicated words, which makes me think he's smart. Uh, me too. And I don't even know what half of this shit is. Mike, he knows his shit. I don't know what, yep. it, what shit he knows, but he knows it. He says the anal cavity. I'm like, where is that? It's right on your, it's on your face. It's right. Where is it? It's right there. We're looking at it. Am I pointing at it? It's, it's inside though. It's more like. It's See, inside. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. We'll be right back. Buy whatever we tell you to buy. It helps so much. Thank yes. you. Hey, thanks for listening to our podcast. We just want to take a break to tell you to like, thanks for listening to our podcast. And if you want to rate it, that would be really awesome for us. Like, Listen, we're on break. We're not talking to you like podcast hosts right now. We're just talking to you like people. As a friend. And we just want to say, please rate the show because it helps out huge amounts. Like, we're not desperate. We're, like, kind of desperate. We're giving shout outs right now to all the people who are giving it ratings. So, huge shout out right now to Brian Jorgensen. That was sick of you, dude. Thank you. God bless. Uh, huge shout out right now to Mark. Mark W. in Springfield, Connecticut. Back to our podcast. Jenny Blake. Hey, back to our podcast. In Tuscany, and Florida. back to our podcast. God bless you. Thank you. Steven. Cute. Thank you for supporting the show. <laughs> now that you have subscribed to our Patreon, patreon.com slash sticky, S-T-I-K-K-I. We do a lot of fun things there. We get this up. You get this episode day early. You do, we do live streams. Steve does Crypto Corner every week. And every we Tuesday. do, we do uh, free roll poker tournaments and we have the best discord community and it Ever. helps, and it helps the show more than anything else Correct. in the world. So, now that you've done that, we're going to go back to the alien or the EBE, EB, EBO. EBOs. Thank you. Extra, what does it stand for? I don't know. They, why do they change it so often? I don't know. They were just. The, the ETs, you know, man. You know what we used to call them? Extra yeah, ET, the extraterrestrials. Them, yeah, exactly. Get over yourself. We call them those ET fellows. Okay. In my day, when I drove my red truck around. All right, continue. Okay, welcome back to the show. So, the let's talk about their brain. The brain is composed of four major sections. The sections are separated by transverse and longitudinal fissures that are connected to the central lobe, which acts as brainstem and cerebellum. Cerebellum is the thing that helps you maintain equilibrium. The volume of the brain is around 20% superior to that of a man of the same height. It has much more pronounced level of gyrication than an average human. I don't know what that means. Moreover, the ratio of glial cells to neurons is also slightly higher than in humans. It's important to note the presence of nodules on the central lobe. Histological analysis of these structures re reveals a kind of intricate biological circuitry. It is speculated that these nodules are essential to interact with their technology. So it's almost like they built technology yeah. to match their brain and waves. put it into a body. Exactly. Yeah. Consequently, determining the proteon of these structures is absolute priority for the program. It's like what they're trying to do. Okay. The neck is <clears throat> proportionally larger than that of a human, at the same time relatively thin, and as mentioned, the esophagus and trachea are separate. There are no vocal cords in this region. <clears throat> I'm surprised that I thought they had skinny necks, but okay. I thought they had skinny necks forever. I guess when I picture the grays, though, they have the, like, they're more stout. The big head. Yeah. Probably no neck at all. They're more stout. No, they are. They, the tall ones have the little skinny neck. The tall ones. What's tall? Though? Anyway, go ahead. What, is that 150 centimeters? No. Go ahead. Exactly. Continue. I'm so interested in this. The thorax. That I barely want any bits. I really just, I want to know about these you aliens. You want more bits? I want more bits. And barely? I want no. You said barely. You I want some more bits. Jesus Christ. Okay. Please. The thorax, right? The musculature of the thorax is underdeveloped. Muscles equivalent to the pectoralis major can be seen. We can also see the trapezius, deltoid muscles. 
So they have a thorax. They do. We don't have that. Uh, no, because we're not we're not insects. Insects, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. I actually think we do have thoraxes. No, we don't. We don't. I don't think we do. I think we do. Shut up. I don't know. Okay, so he says the ribs and sternum are clearly visible. There are no nipples. That's the craziest part to me. Out of all this, we've been at this show well, for thirty they don't, minutes. If they're There's not, no nipples. if they're not actually nurturing any any life, like because they're artificial, <laughs> then I guess they wouldn't really need nipples. There's no nipples, dude. I'm telling you, that's wild. All right, check this out. The abdomen is wider than the thorax and bulges slightly forward. There's no navel, so they don't have belly buttons. Oh, the thorax is the chest region of the, the body. Region, so yeah. we do have. Let's see. We're a little closer to ants that you've been indiscriminately killing than you thought. Okay, I thought they didn't have a thorax. Okay. The pelvic bones are apparent, but there are no genitals or anuses. So you go ahead and get your laughs out of your system right now. There's no anuses, okay? Wait, what, what was the first part of that? The pelvic bones are apparent. Okay. You can see them, so they have but there's pelvic... no genitals or anus. So it's almost like they evolved past it. Or, or yeah, they don't. They don't like sex. Or they built these creatures to not need that. Bunch of incels. They built the incels to yeah. not need it. Yes. If incels were bio suits that we created to like feel bad about ourselves, yeah. that's what this is, right? Okay. Okay. Hands and feet. Their hands have four digits, including an opposable thumb on the medial side. I don't know what that means. They have no nails. And the texture of their fingerprints is composed of concentric circles. Hmm. Interesting. So their like fingerprints. The Target logo? Yeah, exactly. It's like the Olympics. <laughs> fucking. Yeah. No, it's more like the Target logo. Concentric circles? Concentric means inside of each other. It also means the Olympic logo. No, Olympics side by side. Side by side. And, you know. Unlike, <laughs> fingers are proportionally much longer than in humans. Unlike humans, finger... Finger musculature is entirely intrinsic to the hand. In other words, the muscles used to move fingers are not in the forearms at all, hmm. but entirely located in the hands. Hmm. It's more efficient, right? I guess. Well, think about it. Because like if, if there was an injury that happened to your hand, yeah, it would have to be localized to exactly where your hand is to damage the the ability for you to move those mm, digits. I like that it's my arm that does but, it. But it. But if you're building a I suit. I like it. <laughs> Please stop liking it. If you were building a suit that would be efficient to like withstand damage and all this stuff. Yeah, I get it. Makes sense, right? Yeah, because you can just build a new hand. What? You just no, build a new hand. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so yeah. Um, at first glance, the feet consist of just two digits, but they, they did a necropsy and they determined each toe was made of two fused digits mm. the medial toe is marginally longer than the distal toe the feet are relatively longer and narrower than a human their musculature however is vestigial now we're getting in we're going to get into their biological system so their rep respiratory system right mm -hmm. how do they breathe their cellular rep respiration is equivalent to ours, i.e. they need to oxidize organic components to produce energy. Their lungs have no reciprocating action, but rather have a unidirectional flow of air similar to those seen in birds, which is more efficient than ours. It's speculated this is in response to the brain's elevated metabolic needs. Vocalization is produced by vibration of the wall membrane at a junction between two air sacs. The circuitry system of EBOs is rather analogous to ours. The heart is located in the same place, um, but in a more medial position, directly between the sternum. The heart has two ventricles, two atria. There's an aorta, a pulmonary vein, a pulmonary artery, and a vena cava. Blood flowing to the pulmonary, pulmonary capillaries via the pulmonary artery is pumped against the flow of air, maximizing gas exchange efficiency. Again, the idea is that they built the perfect creature. Yeah, everything is like maximized it's for efficiency. perfect efficiency. It's right. the fucking iPhone of bodies. Got it. Some would say Galaxy. I get it. Okay. You seen the ones that fold? Oh my god. A lot god. of people at WSOP had that this year. But they don't work for long. I heard. I heard oh. the foldy things they increase too. Oh, no, too they they dug it. Okay. Their blood itself is also analogous to that of a human. However, the proportion of plasma is much higher. Albumin is in similar proportion. How uh, Hormone levels are much lower. Because they the, don't have sex. They don't fuck. Metal ion levels are much higher, particularly in copper, and we're going to get to that in a bit. 
and glucose levels are significantly higher. The color of the blood is brownish, given the higher proportion of plasma and concentration of metal ions. And again, don't forget the copper component. Mm -hmm. On the cellular side, um, we'll move on. Moving on. Moving yeah, on. Yeah, we'll skip the cellular, the cellular side. You can read this Reddit post. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, have at it. If you're a scientist and want to know more. Okay, check it out. Their digestive system. It's extremely underdeveloped. There's almost, um, there. there's no stomach, right, in the familiar well, sense? Well, if they're not going to excrement. But there's almost a pseudo stomach located at the transition between the tho thoracic and abdominal cavities. This organ is not involved in digestion, only serves as a reservoir. So a sphincter controls the flow of food into the intestine. The intestine is limited to the equivalent of our small intestine, i.e. it only serves to absorb liquids and nutrients and acts as the main digestive site. It has villi and microvilli like ours. The intestine ends in the hepatorenal organ where non-digested matter is transported to the ureter and excretory system. Residues are dissolved in the ammonia of metabolic waste for excretion. So they sweat it out. They just sweat it all out. Huh. Yeah. And given the absence of teeth, this kind of makes sense as to like... I've never heard of sweaty aliens. I, me either. So, but now you know when they're sweating, they're like peeing. The only sweaty alien <laughs> that I saw, I have to say, was in the movie Alien mm. with Sigourney Weavers. Right. Because that was a significantly sweaty alien. Because they're kind of like, they got a sheen to them. Well, yeah, and I just thought they were doing hella cardio. Okay. But I didn't know. They could have been. Well, they were. Because if you remember, everywhere Sigourney Rands, there's aliens there. I see. And so they're just hella running so around. they're just like peeing in the whole time. like Out of their own bodies. Out of their bodies, yeah. Secreting. Secreting. Oof. Their excrement. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I think we kind of get it. Yeah, we got it. They got their body. Their bodies are weird. Yeah, I want to know if they've like, what else did they would they learn about it? Okay, so let's talk right now about. Like, why does he feel like we have a right to know all this stuff? What's okay, his whole so he thing? just thinks that given all this disclosure that's happening, yeah. it's time to come forward with his own small way. Uh huh. Almost being a straw that broke the camel's back, like just trying to be part of that conversation, right? Sure. And there's, by the way, uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, the um, Senate Majority Leader right now from New York, he just basically said, um, everyone involved in all these secret UAP programs, you have 300 days to come forward. Wow. Or you'll face criminal charges. What? That just came out like yesterday. Whoa, I didn't know about that. He's the Senate Majority Leader. Wow. Chuck Schumer, you heard of him, I'm sure. I, I he's don't He's been in our lives for 20 plus years. Sounds familiar. Yeah, he's very familiar. But but that's insane, right? Yeah. And Harry Reid was his like... Um, I know about Harry Reid because so that's Harry the Reed, name of our airport. And he was the Nevada Senator. He was big on this topic too. I'm a big fan well, of him. because a lot of alien shit happens here. Yes. and But he was big on this topic and particularly... Uh, um, um, bringing the UAP phenomenon to light before okay. he left the Senate, before retiring because of medical stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's almost carrying that torch forward. I see. Also, Senator Marco Rubio from the other side. So it's both sides, right? Okay. Who are, who are talking about this topic, which is whack because, you know, the mainstream media is doing this thing where they go like, a bunch of conspiracy theorists. We have conspiracy theorists have captured our government. I'm so conspiracy bored with that. Oh, term. it's just I'm, nuts. I'm already, I'm so they came bored up with that. that by the way, that term didn't exist until um, Kennedy got killed. Yeah. And then they started calling anybody who questioned the fucking, the word of what they were saying about oh, what happened with Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy theorists. Right. That's how that works. But, okay, so so now you have Marco Rubio coming out saying the same thing. Hey, um, there are whistleblowers who have come forward about these programs. We, we are hearing more and more people. It's not just what we covered a couple weeks ago, David Grosh, which is, by the way, shout out to a lot of you guys who gave us good feedback. That's why we're doing this topic. But it's about, you know, creating a safe place for them to finally come forward where they know they're not going to get fucked with anymore. Okay. And, and so this guy is coming This guy is another one of those people, but he is saying this is all he's going to do. Yeah. Okay. So can, let's expand on the document that he read about their religion. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, you're going to like this. Okay. EBOs believe that the soul... They worship cats. No. That's it. That's, okay, all we, that's all we have. Great. They believe the soul is not an extension of the individual, but rather a fundamental characteristic of the nature 
that expresses, I'm sorry, of nature mm -hmm. that expresses itself as a field not unlike gravity. In the presence of life, this field acquires complexity, resulting in negative en entropy, if that makes sense. This gain in complexity is directly correlated with the concentration of living organisms in a given location. With time and with the right conditions, life in terms becomes more complex until the appearance of sentient life. After reaching this threshold, the field begins to express itself through these sentient beings, forming what we call the soul. Mm -hmm. Through their life experiences, sentient beings will in turn influence the field in a sort of positive feedback loop. This in turn further accelerates the complexity of the field. Eventually, when the field reaches a critical mass, there will be a sort of apotheosis, like a, 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 a moment, like a, a climax. Uh -huh. It's not clear what this means in practical terms, but the quest for api, apotheosis seems to be the EBO's main motivation. They want this spiritual nirvana climax moment to happen. Because they can't have sex. Because they can't fuck. <laughs> gotta look for it somewhere else so true yeah they've been hearing about orgasms they've been reading about them you know they can't experience them so they're like we're gonna like we we're gonna create it somehow <laughs> so the author of the document they made uh, a religion about it that we just talked about the religious document yeah added his reflections and interpretations as an appendix he specified that for the ebos the soul field is not a belief but just an obvious truth he also argues that the soul loses its individuality after death, but that memory and experience persist as part of the field. Mm -hmm. This, in fact, would influence the philosophy and culture of EBOs, resulting in a society that doesn't fear death, but which places no importance or reverence on individuality. This, quote, belief compels them to seed life, shape it, nurture it, monitor it, and influence it for the ultimate purpose of creating this apotheosis. This moment of spiritual enlightenment. So they all feel connected. Yes, they do. Okay. And paradoxically, they have little or no respect for an individual's well-being. So mm -hmm. it's not about the individual. It's about the greater elevated soul. They're like ants. Indeed. Um, he says, please be advised. I'm speaking from memory of something I read more than 10 years ago, and this is in closing. So take the following with a grain of salt. Also, I'm not a philosopher or an artist. Please excuse my... Struggle to properly formulate the concepts of my and my dry terminology. Yeah, I think I forgive you. <laughs> I could barely understand what the fuck you're talking about, dude. Finally, note that this information comes from a document whose author was directly interacting with an EBO. It is not specified whether it was an ambassador, a crash survivor, a prisoner. The means of communication were not specified either. And there you go. I don't get that. The EBO could have been under duress... Um, mm -hmm. whoever's talking to them about the elevated soul. Mm -hmm. We don't know if they were an ambassador. I if see. If they're a prisoner. Okay. You're right. We don't know what angle they have on this, so, on all this as society. As far as the religion for them. stuff goes. We don't know. Okay. Could have been a fucking wacko. Yeah. Hey, imagine they take one of the Myrmans up and they assume that we're all one of the Myrmans. Okay. You're we're, saying Mormons. I was actually thinking of mermaids or mermen oh. because like... I was just listening to a guest on Joe Rogan who was talking about seeing mermaids. Oh shit! Yeah, and that Send was that, that was pretty wild Send too. Me that. And like, it's in the Send the like uh, the lagoon of Seychelles in Africa. And then like other people were coming forward about native cultures um, in other certain areas that like they didn't even think that mermaids were a myth. Like they they didn't know that like there was a myth behind it because like it's just been part of their culture. But they're not like you know beautiful lady creatures they're like they're assholes they're like it's uh, always here like they look more like men mm. and they're like uh they feed on they're mostly benevolent but like some of them will eat people such a shame yeah i always thought they were gonna be hotties yeah they're not i really did. I know little mermaid got us all riled up i know i thought they're gonna be busty hotties they're not yeah yeah it does make sense though because you know i've never seen a seashell that could handle like double d's Nah. have you no, but like the sailors say that they, like they, the you know, their sirens lure in sailors. They don't have seashells. That was like the PG version. Oh. They're topless. My bad. But like the ones that these people have been seeing, mostly guy ones, mermen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a whole different episode. And we as should do As far it. as the EBOs go, 
how do you feel about this so it's funny because this guy uses so many fancy science words yeah that i think he's 100 percent legit and i would go to war for him for sure and it's i like would when, die for him it's like when people talk in british accents i'm like you're smart yeah. i don't know yeah I, and I'm, i would die for his cause and you're smart I would, and i'm dumb i would sell my house and home and all my earthly belongings because i believe him so hard so it lines up with a like a couple of things line up with other things that we've watched like um the whole sharing dna sequence thing um there i don't remember what we were watching like some documentary either y files or some other one um about how someone supposedly claims they were interacting with ebos and they uh the their motive was that we were we shared ancestry and so they almost felt like a Kinship. responsibility to like yeah to protect our, our planet from other yes more malevolent uh beings yes Th- that those are ebos there. who are at war with each other yeah almost well really so the war is for our like you know our in they want to influence us yeah and, and, and some want to protect us and not yeah. you know and leave us undisturbed benevolent and some want to control us yeah. and make us some slaves mean. yeah yeah this, this is all like not i don't know if we believe it but that's all this, these are the things that we've heard within in the as far as the we believe in mermaids we don't believe in that yeah i mean we're gonna need a lot more whistleblowers because guess what we got hundreds of years of sailors talking about mermaids a lot of years of mermaids but the 1960s is like the first time anyone talked about aliens so but the biggest question is were mermaids busty and i don't think they were um maybe perhaps somewhere but i the ones that they've been talking about I haven't seen the evidence. No, they talk about them being really ugly. Christopher Columbus saw some alien, uh, some saw some mermaids, and people thought he saw a manatee because how he, he described them as being so ugly. But guess what? He, people say that he said his wife was a manatee. Shut up. <laughs> Let's go back to EBOs okay. instead of that. <laughs> okay. Um. So the other. How thing, do you feel about this entire thing, all the way from top to bottom? Well, what do you mean feel? Oh, well, like, I think um, it's all fascinating. What are your thoughts about it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's like great. the Bob Lazar thing where it makes sense. And like, you know, all of the things that people have seen as far as UFO crashes and UFO sightings UAPs. and all this stuff, you whatever they're Sorry. called now, UAPs, <laughs> um, that it makes sense that there would be pilots in them. But... Um, I also I go I go back and forth between that and um, the government wanting to come out with all this stuff now for a different agenda, you know, like why now, you know? Sure. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it Who would it would knows. it would make sense. Also, it would make sense that they create bodies from stem cell research or whatever another grow, thing like yeah another thing from i don't know if it was for, uh, like we've watched so many documentaries that i just can't remember which would what parts are from what but um when they spoke to certain uh ab- abductees people that have been abducted by supposedly ad- abducted um they mentioned trying that the people that the aliens that the ebos were creating hybrid uh you know human and ebo hybrids that's like one thing and then another thing was that they were actively changing our dna sequences like disconnecting certain parts even and then there's there's parts of our dna chain that don't make sense like almost like it got replaced with an artificial link and and then we kept breeding that breeding that way mm. with the artificial link where it's clearly different than the other part of the chain. Sure. Um But yeah, this is our, this is all stuff that I, it's not like I studied it. Yeah, so it's hard to. Uh, know. It's just all. Yeah. Do I trust the person yeah. who did the research in the documentary? Exactly. I don't. I don't know. I, I know it's I, interesting. All I know is I smashed the fucking like. I like hearing all angles of everything. I mean, I think I've heard every 
there's, you know, moon landing conspiracies, right? Did we land on the moon yeah. and stuff? But then there's also so many other conspiracies with the moon. Like, did we land on the moon and found an alien species there? Did we find out that the moon is actually a giant satellite? Did we not land on the moon? It's the actually moon made of pl- a plasma. Yeah. Is the moon hollow? So there's... It's my favorite one. You know, I listen to all of them and I haven't... I don't have a hardcore stance on like on moon theories you know yeah but i have a hardcore stance on the moon yeah what's your hardcore stance i think it's a big rock that impacts our oceans so that's your that's the you like the mainstream narrative see when you put it like that how about when they (laughs) shot a rocket at it an unmanned rocket at it and it made a sound that rang like a bell for hours it wasn't an unmanned rocket because that's impossible it was a lander that landed on it. They didn't land. They shot it directly into it. Well, no, it crashed into it. They crashed it on yeah, purpose they into it. it. Yeah, yeah, they crashed didn't it. Didn't land. Yeah, but it's not a rocket. But okay, whatever it was, okay, they yeah. shot it at it on, yeah. for a reason. And it rang like a bell on purpose. They crashed yeah. it into so it. So I've heard this a lot too. Yeah. And the I, the the argument, right? So like, what I want to believe is that it's a big hollow structure and like it's got spy cameras all over it, but. The argument is that the instrumentation was whack. Well, it doesn't even have to be like some uh, spy camera thing. Like, what if it's but just... Like, why would a huge structure like that ring hollow? Well, what if it's just made of metal? Like, what if it's just like a like a planet or like a, you know... Oh, yeah, made of metal, yeah. A, a cos- cosmic thing. It uh, wouldn't be natural, though, like for ha- it to be hollow we like have, that. We have... But, well, we don't know that. I mean, th- well, for us to right, right, w- w- what appears in nature, right? Yeah, like that wouldn't be normal because we haven't seen anything. How like do that. we know? We haven't explored deep space, but so of what's what's not. normal? Well, what? Is, <laughs> like, there's like there's a huge, massive universe of all these celestial bodies. Like, how are you supposed to know exactly what each one is? Of course, but all we can do is like based on the laws that we all know. They also and have look, gas planets, and there's uh, solid planets. Bro, I think UAP phenomenon is legit. And they're breaking all kinds of laws of physics. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying even even the studied planets that we know of, they're not all built the same. You know, some have yeah. internal magma cores. Some are have like denser cores. Some are made of gas. So, yeah. you know, to say that this celestial body can't possibly be hollow because it doesn't appear in nature, well, we don't know. Of course And that's know. why I, I always steer towards we don't know. Um, I like to hear everything. Yeah, I just think that, so like when it comes to the moon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they did it a couple of times. A couple of, of Apollo missions land on the moon and the ringing like a bell thing happened a couple of times, actually. Mm-hmm. But there's a belief that it was an instru- instrumentation failure more so than like the moon's structure. But you're right, we don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, we don't, we just don't know. Which is fascinating. And yeah. I, I personally would rather talk about that than most things on the earth. So like, it's more fascinating to me than almost anything. There's a whole mermaid culture in the sea. And merman. And merman, but more there's importantly, pe- merman. There's people that don't believe merman exists and only mermaids exist. Well, I didn't believe any of that at all, but now that I I went on a rabbit hole of a bunch of people talking about their mermaid stories, and now I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. When one person says it, it's like, yeah, your eyes might be tricking. Five people, I'm like, maybe you guys were all drunk. And then like when it's like a lot, I'm like, damn it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. And until I see... I've seen a lot of weird creatures on... I follow this Twitter profile. Uh, there's a couple. One's Massimo and one's... One's Massimo? Uh, like one, the Target uh, clothing brand? Kind of spelled like that, yeah. So, um, and then the other one is Guns N' Roses Girl. Anyway, they post like a bunch of different creatures that I've never seen in my life, but they exist on Earth. Um, I mean, they, there's video of it and they're called things like scientists know about them, right? So there's so many known creatures. I can't imagine how many we don't know about. And yeah. they're constantly discovering more. Um, so as much as I want to giggle about mermaids and yetis or whatever, they could be out there. I don't know. My thing about the yetis is that I don't... like Because the big thing about yetis, right? Yeah. Is that... Their feet. What's that? The big thing of yeti about yetis is their feet. Well, no, big feet is different <laughs> than yetis. They're similar. How so? They're basic. They're basically the same. 
No, Big Feet's is different because Big Feet's is in the the rural regions. Yeah, and yeah, these are in the, the snowy regions. Exactly, like yeah. like Everest. Yeah, but right. they're the same like type of thing. Well, that's what I hear, right? Okay, go on. Okay, but my thing about the Yetis is they've never ever one time even seen a Yeti that was not made out of clay. Shut up. And that. Yeah, I have. When? On that Disneyland roller coaster ride, you go through the Yeti Mountain. There's a fucking Yeti there. He's not made out of clay. He's, are you sure? Did you feel him? He's animatronic. Did he do stop motion? He, did he move? He in did stop not motion? do stop motion. He did robotic motions. That's insane. I need to see this. You've never been on. Can we um, go? I want to see that. You've never been on that ride. Never seen that. Shut that's, up. That's crazy. What is it called? Not Thunder Mountain. Matterhorn. Matterhorn. But they got rid of it. They did? Conveniently. See? They don't want you to know. I'm telling you. There's a whole basketball court in there. Get the fuck out of here. Secrets of Disneyland. What are you talking about? Google it. Shit, dude. <laughs> All right. This episode got too crazy yeah, for me. It got really crazy. I need to get out of here. Do you believe in EBOs and do you believe in the basketball court inside do, of the and Matterhorn? Do you believe in the Yetis? Are they made out of clay or not? And go Google all the mermaid stories now. <laughs> yeah, and merman. Well, maybe we'll talk about it on the next one. We should. Yeah, because okay. I've it's reignited interest. I don't believe in mermen, but I do believe in mermaids. But we'll get to that later. All right. That's sexist. Uh, yeah, I hope it is. Okay. Well, and we love you guys. Thank you also so much for supporting the show. Yeah, check out our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Links in the description. Love you guys. Appreciate you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.